Welcome to Real Life 360. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Your real life, your Thursday can be better than you ever dreamed of. I'm Amy Schaefer. Coming up, we have a great interview with Pastor Josiah Smith, and we're going to talk all about the Johnstown Night of Hope. Hope is the anchor to the soul. But first, let's hear music from Ken Reynolds as he sings Not Ashamed. Oh, and the book of Romans says, we're not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone that believes. Come on. And I tell the whole world about you, there's no other name. I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed Come on. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. I will never stop loving you. I will never stop giving you all the praise. Because I'm crazy about you, yeah. There is nothing that I wouldn't do. There is nothing that will keep me from your love. From your love, from your love. Hey, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I tell the whole world that there's no other name. There's no other name. No other name. I am not ashamed.
Sydney Grant for Good News 360, where we bring you stories showing how God is on the move. Ever wonder where the world's largest megachurches are? American megachurches like Hillsong and the Potter's House have become household names, but surprisingly, they're small in comparison to their counterparts around the world. According to Leadership Network, Asia is home to the world's largest church. With 480,000 members, Korea's Yeodo Full Gospel Church is the biggest house of worship on the planet. Coming in second, Deeper Christian Life Ministry in Nigeria has a weekly attendance of 75,000. In Latin America, three mega churches in Brazil, Chile, and El Salvador have about 50,000 members. And who's more religious, men or women? Well, according to a new research poll by Pew, the answer is women. A study found that more than 60% of women and less than 50% of men say religion is very important in their lives. Social scientists say women are universally more spiritual than men across all societies and cultures. The study also found Christian women are more likely to pray and attend weekly services. Scientists believe social roles make women more likely to spend time focusing on God. And another portrayal of Jesus is coming to the big screen. Ewan McGregor plays the savior in the upcoming film, Last Days in the Desert. The actor told the New York Daily News he prepared for the film by focusing on the frustration Jesus had while trying to communicate with his father in the wilderness. The movie follows Yeshua wandering around the desert for 40 days while trying to stave off the enemy. The devil, by the way, is also played by McGregor. Last Days in the Desert hits theaters May 13th. That's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. We want you to have a great day on purpose. We love good news around here and inspirational topics, a lot of great stuff going on. I'm here with Jay Hi, on Amy. Thursday. Good to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you, sir. Saw you on Monday. And yes, now back again on I know. Thursday. That was so fun. I enjoyed so much watching the hard questions pastors dance around <laughs> the subject of a contentious wife. It well, you know, there wasn't a lot of time. Quite there wasn't a lot of time. Amazing. So I got to go to bat for the men. There wasn't a lot of time, but there's a lot more to be said about that. Yeah, so you have to do your do your, some research and dig it up into scripture. And what about the interview with Rick Paladin? And he's sharing about that spirit of fear that came on him and God completely delivered him from fear. You know, that was phenomenal. And uh, I think God really wants to annihilate that today. Yes. Um, you know, it's amazing. The last two nights I was sharing before all this even the interview came up, my son has woken up a couple of nights um, just in fear, mm -hmm. in fear. And we've noticed that and uh, the importance of battling that spirit of fear, you yeah. know, by speaking the word, as mm -hmm. he mentioned, because mm -hmm. God hasn't given us a spirit, spirit of fear, but a fear. power, love, and a sound mind. But what I love right. about that is right before there, mm -hmm. he tells Timothy, stir up yep. the gift. gift. Many times fear comes mm -hmm. because there's a gift inside of the individual that the devil wants to stifle. Wow. And fear and faith cannot cohabit together. Mm -hmm. So we have to annihilate the fear in order to release the gift of God that's within us. And if you think about those thoughts of suicide or death, just to remember that it is the thief that comes to steal, kill, Amen. and destroy. Jesus came to give us life. So if they're not life-giving thoughts, if they're right. not l thoughts of hope, <clears throat> thoughts of a great future, then you have to realize those thoughts are from the enemy, from the evil one, whose whole entire mission is to take you out. Amen. Amen. And we have to stir up that gift within us. David said, he said, I would have fainted unless yeah. I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. Many times we do have to have hope. Yeah. We've got to have hope and believe. And sometimes by stirring ourselves up, by mm. praising God, yes. lifting him up, magnifying him, it stirs yes. that gift up so then we can have the hope that we need to have right. in order to experience the breakthrough that we want to see. Something we make our kids say all the time whenever they're like, ooh, a monster. They could even be joking, but we always have them say, I fear not, God is with me, God is on my side. And they just say it almost reflectively now. I fear not, God is with me, God is on my side. Because all kinds of fearful thoughts, think about adults. Fear right. that our kids aren't gonna serve God, fear we're gonna die of a disease, fear of, you know, a car. I mean, fear is just coming at all around, but we have been given the mind of Christ. That's right, amen. 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 And so Amen. we have hope, which Amen. we're talking about later in the show. And we want you to have hope. If you're dealing with any thoughts that are coming at you to take you out, stop right now. Call Amen. us at 888-665-4483. We're here to annihilate fear. And we're here to bring faith into your heart and life into your home and your situation. Give us a call. Our prayer partners will pray for you. Coming up, we're going to talk with Pastor Josiah Smith all about hope and a night of hope in Johnstown, Amen. PA. We'll be right back. Why did I sign up for Harvest Express? It makes giving to Cornerstone that much easier. Now this is great. 
I don't have to worry about remembering to send my check every month because it's automatic. I know that my gift starts helping spread the gospel immediately. I don't have to wait for the mail and it helps Cornerstone right away. Call today and ask to be part of the Harvest Express or visit ctvn.org slash Harvest Express for more information. Hello, I'm Ruth Schofield. Come explore with me the calling. latest with Cornerstone Cares, our outreach network reflecting God's love and action. An indigenous community is coming to Christ thanks to the evangelism of one of our partners. Our friends at Frontier Harvest Ministries tells us there's been a major breakthrough among the Pulang people in Myanmar. The ministry partnered with First Light International to send out a team of 60 people to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We're told they preached the gospel fearlessly in 45 villages, prayed for the sick, and gave food out to the poor. The ministry says the evangelism led to 32 people receiving salvation. Salvation. Frontier Harvest Ministries is now planning follow-up trips to gather all the new believers together for training. It's so great to see God's kingdom in action. Wow, it's so awesome to see what God is doing. And because of your faithful, continued support, Cornerstone Cares are continually being the arms, the hands, and the feet of Jesus all around the world. So thank you so much for all that you do. That's right. We love our family. And today we welcome Pastor Josiah Smith of City Reach Johnstown, PA. He is hosting the Johnstown Festival of Hope to see the city of Johnstown unite around the hope of Jesus. Josiah, Amen. welcome to Real Life thank 360. You. Thank you. Welcome, welcome sir. to be with you guys. Yeah. I said yeah. it was a night of hope. It's a festival of hope because it's a two-day yeah. event. That's right. yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so it's actually next Friday and next Saturday, May 20th and 21st. Okay. Uh, we're going to be hosting two nights uh, that we're calling the Festival of Hope. So Friday night, we're having a, uh, a concert. We rented out our local hockey arena in Johnstown, the wow. War Memorial Arena. Nice. And we're gonna have a concert, and then we have a guest, Johannes Amritzer, all the way from Sweden, gonna be sharing uh, the message of hope, which is the message of Jesus, yeah. uh, with all our attendees. And then Saturday night, uh, we're going to our city's baseball stadium, Point Stadium, yeah. and uh, we're gonna have a service there, just celebrating what God has done. And uh, we're just expecting great things, and we really want to share this message with our city, that there is always hope in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter what you've been through, where you are right now, uh, there's hope in Jesus. So we're really excited to share that message. So this is not just for your church people. This is for the whole yeah, area. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. anybody, all are welcome. Yeah, so we're, we're really excited because this is something that other churches in the area have, have got on board with or partnering with. Uh, but really, the, the goal is that we will be able to share with people who don't know Jesus. Amen. Um, so it's, it's not even, I've been telling the churches, this is not a church event. This is a community event. This is where we want to bless our city. And we, want to, we really do want to see people who don't have hope receive the message of hope. Uh, we want to see people who are in wheelchairs mm -hmm. come out of their wheelchairs. Uh, you know, people who are dealing with depression yes. find peace right. and, uh, and really just the holistic gospel message that Jesus brings hope in every area of life. Amen. That's so. awesome, man. Uh, what about, uh, tell us a little bit about the pastors that are coming together and the people that are coming in. I mean, it's unusual to see people yeah. coming, pastors and churches coming together. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, that's been an exciting part of this. Uh, it's always exciting when people unite. And um, so for the event, we've really made it our goal that we're not just going to unite around the idea of unity, but we're actually going to give us all something to look at. Jesus, and then we're going to have a goal, which is to reach lost people. And when we're all looking at Jesus reaching lost people, we'll find ourselves united. And it's neat because as I've been around to different churches sharing about the event, raising awareness, uh, we've seen that happen. Um, even just yesterday, we were having a prayer gathering and, you know, over 40 people together wow. praying for the city, so awesome. different denominations, different churches, but we really were in one heart and one mind. And so it's been neat to see how Jesus has used this uh, to gather people together, and I just expect that more in the future. So Amen. what is your story? Have you been pastoring for a while? Did you always see yourself as a pastor? Did you see yourself <laughs> gathering the troops one day to have a big festival of hope? Uh, well, not festival of hope. No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I grew up as a pastor's kid, uh, so fairly familiar with the ministry life. 
And you know, I think my dad pr said what probably many other dads said, where uh, you know, if if uh, if you can do anything else, do that. Don't be a pastor. <laughs> yeah, but, right, right. But God put it in my heart. I didn't really see myself being a pastor necessarily. Uh, I believe God's given me a heart for outreach and creative ministry context, uh, and it happened to be a pastor. I, I didn't know what it would be, yeah. um, but we planted a church uh, called City Reach Johnstown in the Moxham neighborhood of Johnstown uh, just a year and a half ago, yeah. and uh, it was actually while I was in Africa two years ago that God kind of put the seed in my heart for this idea to, to host a festival. Mm -hmm. um, I was with Johannes Amritzer in, in Tanzania, mm -hmm. and we saw 80,000 people in one night wow. uh, come and singing about Jesus. And in that week, we saw over 35,000 people saved. Wow. And it was paradigm shifting for me because I thought, wow, God can bring 35,000 people to him in one week. And there's only about 22,000 people in the, the actual city of Johnstown. Um, why could he not use two nights to change a city? Yeah. And so that's kind of where the idea was born. Yeah. And uh, you know, if fear would attack me, that's kind of how I remind myself, no, 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 Jesus did this before, he can do it again. Yes. And why not in Johnstown? Have you had to battle with some things in order to get this thing off the ground? I mean, that's a major undertaking. You said you've only been in ministry as a pastor for a year and a half at the church you're at. So right. I'm sure there's probably some fear that probably came along with that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I think what I, what I tend to do is I minimi minimize what God tells me. So like God gives me a vision and I'll say, that'll happen eventually. Yeah, right. Uh, but this year we're just gonna start small. And uh, so really I think God's had to push me a little bit and keep reminding me like, no, this is gonna be as big as I want it to be and anything can happen. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to be like, well, that's okay. We'll, we'll do it smaller, or th this'll work fine. And I minimalize it, but, but God keeps pushing me out and says, no, this is how it's gonna be. Um, mm. So yeah, he, he pushes me into faith sometimes. Why do you think we do that? Why do we minimalize uh, the things that God gives to us? Yeah, well, I think it's easier for us. We want to rationalize everything. We want to be able to see it. And, uh, you know, if God spoke something to our heart, it, it seems that, well, this is in my spirit, but I don't see it. So mm -hmm. um, we tend to find the nearest, nearest thing that we can see, and we, we relate it to that. But uh, yeah, so walking by faith, obviously, it's walking by something we don't see. Uh, so I, I love what you're doing on Saturday night at the end of the event, I yeah. believe. Yeah, so Saturday night we're going to have water baptism yeah. uh, oh, wow. immediately following the service. And uh, our, our hope is that everyone, mm -hmm. Friday night, we want to see you know, hundreds come to know Jesus. And then Saturday night, that they would come back uh, ready to be baptized. And Saturday night, everyone who comes to know Jesus, we'll be able to baptize them right away. And uh, I mean, that's one of the first ways that we can follow Jesus in obedience. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell my church all the time is uh, this is our first step. Uh, so that night they can take that first step immediately. Yeah. You know, maybe talk to somebody right now. I just feel this in my heart that, you know, a lot of people get saved. They give their lives to the Lord, mm -hmm. but they don't get water baptized. <laughs> yeah. You know, encourage them yeah. to, to do that. And what can happen in their life when somebody does that? Yeah. Well, I mean, what we've seen at our church is uh, baptism is a, is a testimony. Uh, it's a way that... You know, you, of course, let the world, let your family, your friends mm -hmm. know that this is what I've done. And uh, so it's a moment that we don't want to, we don't want to shrug it off, but Amen. we want it to be a big deal, one, because Jesus told us to do it. And so it is a step of obedience, but then also it's a powerful witness. Um, we actually do our church baptisms in our w local YMCA. And so it's neat, uh, awesome. sometimes coming out of the pool as we're passing the lifeguards, I'll, I'll ask yeah. the person being baptized, like, hey, you want to share something with them? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just a neat opportunity to share. This is what Jesus has done in my life, and uh, I want to share that. You so. look so youthful, you know. <laughs> do you get that a lot? I, I do tend to get that, Young yeah. and cool, yeah, we'll say. That. Did you serve God through your teens and to your young adulthood? Yeah, yeah, my story is not really one uh, that has taken too many crazy turns, I suppose. Um, but from a young age, my parents, uh, there's five of us kids, and they just instilled in us really uh, a deep love for God and uh, just practicing devotion. Mm -hmm. And so even as a young kid, uh, we, we all learned music and things like that. So we'd be in our separate room playing music and singing songs and things yeah. like that to Jesus. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been a journey of of realizing that I'm still a sinner, of course, mm -hmm. even though I grew up as a good church boy, mm -hmm. that I still need saved and yeah. that God's grace, like I need it every day. Right. Um, and a journey of surrender and sacrifice, like how much, how much do I want of God and how much will I give of myself? Will I give everything? Yeah. Um, you know, and that's one of the so greatest great. testimonies mm -hmm. is that yep. 
being kept. Yep. You know, you yeah. didn't have to stray off. That yeah. shows yeah. that people at young ages can still walk Absolutely. this walk, go through their teen years yeah. and yep. still be serving God. That's yeah. right, Absolutely. I love that. I thought what a great example. His story was exactly what I was assuming. But yeah. what it, could you talk to people that just in 30 seconds mm -hmm. that need hope? Maybe they're going through an illness or maybe they're struggling with their teenager or maybe they're struggling with a job and they just need hope. What yeah. would you say to yeah. them? Well, a lot of times I think what we do is we read the Bible, but we tend to separate that from like our lives today. And the Jesus of the Bible, we really like. But then when we go through daily struggles and when we're sick and when we don't feel hope, uh, we kind of make a, a distance between those two. But Jesus of the Bible is still Jesus today and he wants to work in your life and, and there is hope for you in your situation Amen. if you just believe. Right. Amen. Well, just thank believe. you so much for yeah. coming out today and sharing with us. And we pray that God blesses this time Thanks. at the Thanks Festival of Hope. Festival of Hope, Johnstown, PA, next Amen. Friday and Saturday. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Don't miss out. But Don and Terry will be joining us in just a few moments to talk about all of the God moments in this real life hour. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Want a way to share Bible verses, inspirational photos, or uplifting videos with your friends and family online? Like the Cornerstone Television page on Facebook. Every day we'll keep you updated on show info, behind the scenes facts, and daily inspiration from our exclusive photos, videos, quotes, and more. Go to facebook.com slash cornerstone television to connect with us. We want to hear from you. Let's spread the good news of Jesus to our family and friends online. Hey ladies, I have some great news for you. The women of the Cornerstone team have joined together to make a special journal just for you. It's the Cornerstone Take 10 Journal. It's a 21 day prayer journal designed to help us all grow as women of God. Each day begins with 10 minutes of inspiration, life coaching, encouragement, and journal time. May Partners, call today with your gift to the ministry for this brand new devotional written by the women of Cornerstone for the women in your life. Welcome back. We're here to pray and believe God and stretch our faith together. You know, that's what it is. We put our faith together and the Lord meets us in that time. And Pastor, we're, thank you for coming and being here part of this prayer time. Uh, we've had many people call that have been dealing with, with fear and with just being under bondage of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And you guys see it in your ministries too. That yeah. How big of a deal is, is this in regards to people? Are you seeing a lot of people that are being put into that type of a bondage and you're ministering to them? Without a doubt, I think that uh, fear is, uh, we were talking about it in our little crosstalk mm -hmm. there, that fear is something that the devil uses to stifle your gift. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why we, we always quote that scripture, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a but we forget before, he said, because of the gift that was in your grandmother and in your mother, That's and right. I persuaded that it's in you, stir up the gift. So today, if you're in your homes, stir up the gift today. Yeah, stir it up. Right. Realize God hasn't given you that spirit. He's given you the gift that's within you. Yeah. Unleash that gift today and break the spirit of fear today yeah. and watch what God will do in your life. But I do yes. see that all the time. Amen. Well, and I, I appreciate what you shared is that so many times we buy into the fact that we just have to live with it. Yep. You know, it's like, well, we'll just take a, a pill in a way and we'll just take care of it. But no, you, you really shared that we are to be overcomers. And that is, that's just a, almost a light bulb moment mm -hmm. for a lot of us out there knowing that, hey, we don't have to, we don't have to buy into that. Taking a pill also mentality. Also, fear of the times that we're living in. Yes, that's you know, right. Yeah. Fe like, it's just like fear is coming all around, but that's not God's best for our lives. That's not how we're supposed to live. We're supposed mm -hmm. to live free and light mm -hmm. and, and, and trust. Our trust is in God and the kingdom yeah. of heaven, not the kingdom of earth. You, still, you right. still have time to call 888-665-4483 if you do it right now. Mm -hmm. You need to call right now because we're going to pray in just a minute. Lay our hands on these prayer requests and believe God for His supernatural touch. You know, the faith is the uh, opposite of fear. Amen. Faith is God's, mm -hmm. God's given. That's the power of God to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse called in and Jesse's asking us to pray for depression, deliverance from depression, and for salvation for Peggy Ann, and prayer for deliverance from fear and for her daughter, for her daughter. 
Well, I have a prayer request for Margie, and she's still experiencing sadness. She had um, gone through an abortion, and she's still dealing with the guilt, and she wants to know the Lord now and to know her child is with God. Oh, amen. 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 You need to really amen. lift her up amen. in prayer. And Cindy called. She's 58 years old, and she thinks that God doesn't seem to care about her life, and she needs work, and she's experiencing anxiety. And I just wanted to say that God does care. Amen. He cares amen. so much that he sent his son, he gave his best That's so right. that you could have a great life. And so believe that God, he'll, he'll take care of the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, and he will surely take care of you. That's Amen. right. Yes, he will. Amen. And there's another Cindy. Her husband, Charles, uh, is dealing with an addiction to alcohol and drugs. And today we're going to believe God to break that shackle off of your family. Well, enough talking. Let's pray. Pastor Rick, would you lead us in this prayer uh, Amen. for freedom? Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you right now according to the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, for being more than enough yes. to break every yes. fear, every yes. bondage yes. that's represented yes. here, God. God, so we call on you yes, just to be true to your word that you've already established. Thank and we you, thank you that in each and every circumstance yes, that they will no longer just be coping, but there's going to be complete freedom yes, by yes. the blood covenant of Jesus yes, Christ. That even today there will be tangible evidence, a yes. tangible yes. reality yes. of the blood of Jesus Christ touching and releasing. And God, just each and every person, God, we thank you that you're a God of compassion. And we call on that same yes, God of Lord. compassion today to meet these needs, God. So God, thank you for watching, you. for seeing, for noting yes, yes. every single person in their name today. So God, thank you for freedom yes, in the name amen. of Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Jamie, to, tell us what's coming up next. Well, coming up next here on Cornerstone Network, join the hard questions panel as they discuss <laughs> those tough theological terms and concepts. What is sanctification? What is justification? And what is communion? And why is it important in our walk today? This is an important program. Mm -hmm. As I told you when we started, that God was, had a, a, an appointment with you. And as the Spirit of the Lord spoke to you today and gave you that encouragement that you don't have to be under the thumb of the devil and be controlled by this Amen. fear, when it comes, it's going to come at you again. Now listen, once you're set free, you've got to stay free. That's right. Mm -hmm. so it comes at you again. I want you to, when you feel that thought come into your mind, I want you to take captive of that thought. The Bible says that and push it out of your brain and say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. Mm -hmm. And you will live in victory and minute by minute by minute. That's why we're here. We love you. We're thankful for you. Thank you for your partnership. We'll see you again on Real Life. wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.